Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today I'm excited to actually kind of have a channel update. I wanted to just do an unboxing. I've had a box here for almost a week that came from a good friend of mine that uh, knows a lot about Genesis. I'll have a link to his channel down below, Blast Mode 7. Very knowledgeable about Genesis stuff. Really good at collecting things and, and presenting you know his collection well by you know finding labels and, and creating boxes for games that are loose carts or what have you. But <clears throat> anyway, he sent me a PM and said, Dean, I've got some extra Genesis games. I know you're trying to get your Genesis collection up and running. Would you be interested in some of them? And he sent me a really nice picture. He said, you know, go ahead and choose from the picks and let me know what you'd like. So I went through and these are the games that he sent me. And then he surprised me with a few additional things as well. I'll quickly get into this. <clears throat> Thanks, Clinton, by the way. I really appreciate this. It's had a nice little note, too, with it, which is nice. Uh, some personal things in here. But, but really, a, you know, just a great guy. I really enjoy his channel and everything he does in the Genesis. He sent me... Um, this one he sent me, which I didn't ask for, but it's kind of a little bonus called Columns for the Genesis. It looks really cool. Probably some kind of an interesting puzzle game or arcade-style game, but I'm anxious to check that out. These are games that I actually like. He's, um, the Jungle Book from Walt Disney, which I loved as a kid. I went to the theater and saw this back in the 60s. Because it kind of dates how old I am. Uh, Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing. This one I'm actually very excited to play. I never played this one. I think I played Pole Position and a couple other uh, F1 <clears throat> games that were on the uh, Super NES, but I never played this. I'm excited to play this. This actually looks interesting, Caesar's Palace, which is when I go to Vegas, that's where I always stay, is Caesar's Palace. It's a little dated now, but I still love the place, and I'm not a real big gambler, but I'll go and watch my friend blow $50,000 there. He used to call me up, and then he'd fly me to Vegas. Hey, I'm up, I'm up, you know, ten grand. i will pick you up at LAX. It's on me. Come to Vegas. We'll have a great time. I'd spend days in Vegas and watch him lose tens of thousands of dollars. So now I can pretend the same thing. But I don't risk anything, and I can play it on the Genesis. So I'm excited about Caesar's Palace. And last but not least, Batman Forever. I know this has mixed reviews, but I really like the graphics in this, and I'm anxious to play this, um, and as well as looking for some of the other Batman games from Sunsoft that I'm very in interested in. Um, he also has two games that came fully boxed. This is one of the games he had that he wanted to get rid of, and I really picked up on this. I saw Mark Bussler do a review of this quite a while ago. 688 Attack Sub for the Genesis. This looks really cool, and it comes complete with a nice box. It's got the really thick manual with quite a bit of information. It's kind of an interesting strategy game. kind of reminds me of the old silent service game that was on the C64. I see Vinny's already down there near my tripod, waiting to pounce on it. Don't bump my tripod, bud. And then the wonderful game Strider. This was a real bonus. Uh, he actually, he knew that I wanted this game. He goes, look, I have an extra copy of, of Strider. I'm going to send it to you as well. You know, And I, I paid him for the games. I didn't expect all this extra stuff. And it's complete. It even has the booklet. And the game, the original cartridge. I'm very stoked about this. Very anxious to play this. I've always wanted to dive into this. I played this at a friend's house, God, a thousand years ago. And I really enjoyed it. So I've been looking forward to kind of getting back into it. And if that's not enough, he saw the other video I did where my friend Gary from Oklahoma sent me tons of Genesis games. And he picked up on that. And he goes, Dean, I also sent you a bunch of labels. So if, once you get your own boxes, you can, you know put those other games and put them in the label. So I have this uh, Sonic Spinball, you know, label, which is really nice. I have Mrs. Pac-Man, which is one of the games that my friend Gary gave me, which is, I, when I love Mrs. Pac-Man. I'm a huge fan back in the arcade days. And Aladdin, which is another game I really like. I love the graphics. I don't know if it's a good game or bad on the Genesis, but um, I'm anxious to play Aladdin. NBA Jam, a very another popular game on the Genesis. So it's nice that I have all these one beautiful condition labels. Mortal Kombat 2, I have Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 now in the Genesis. So I'm really excited about having that. And uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. This is one of the games I got from my good friend Gary as well. Sonic the Hedgehog. And Sonic 2, which I also have from my good friend Gary. 
So it's great having all of these labels, even Caesar's Palace, which is awesome. So I can think of my buddy blowing 50K in Caesar's Palace. I think he's in prison, by the way. <laughs> Last I looked at him on the internet, I think he got locked up. He's an interesting character. But anyway, and then Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing, which um, which I also have now. I, I'll be able to, once I find the boxes for this, and he said you can go on eBay and look for the boxes. And I think he has a friend or someone where you can buy these kind of retro boxes for the Genesis and Super NES, which I'm anxious to play as well as our old registration card for something. And then here's the booklets as well. Mortal Kombat, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic 2, Caesar's Palace, Emmanuel, and the Nigel Mansell's World Championship. So I, I am so stoked. Thank you, Clint, so much. This really means a lot to me. I mean, this is the guy that sent me and did a wonderful series of videos showing how he did a stereo mod on a Sega Genesis, which I'm going to show here in a minute. And then was nice enough to send me all of the stuff, you know, the, the guys with well, the you know, YouTube is filled, the YouTube community with some of the most wonderful people. I mean, it, it almost brings tears to my eyes when I think of how generous, just in the last year, my channel has grown so much. I've met so many wonderful new people, like Clint, like my friend Gary, you know, like Dave at Lawn Boys Post 1975 and Steve Benway. And uh, all my other friends, uh, you know, Scott the Console Snob. I've got so many, I don't want to leave anyone out with a massive shout-out. But there's, I'm just overwhelmed with the avalanche of just kindness and greatness that I've seen on YouTube. It really has meant so much to me. I also belong to groups on Facebook that are gaming community groups. And it's just so wonderful. It's just a wonderful array of people uh, in the community, whether it's retro games or multiplayer or old games, new games, it's all great, and it's all good as far as I'm concerned. I'm just happy to see that we all can come to the table and bring our own personalities and something to YouTube, which makes it so special. It really means a lot to me. So, Clint, thanks so much for these games. I, I I'm so excited about this. I'm really dying to get into the 688 attack sub. I don't care how bad uh, the reviews are. Actually, Mark Bussler uh, kind of liked it. And it just looks interesting. I love those old kind of type of strategy games, military strategy games. But anyway, that's what's going on with that. Um, I've been working on the game room, which my friends on Facebook that have followed me have seen me slowly, incrementally make a bunch of changes, which I'm going to take the camera and pan around and do kind of an updated game room tour showing some of the new mods that I've done. One of them you can see part of behind me. I finally painted like I had a couple years ago. I painted this... Um, Xbox 360 silhouette of a controller behind my sign. One of those little details that I moved in here was just quick to get the game room set up and I just never finished it. So I had to find, I found my old darker gray paint on the other side of this orange stripe. I have a darker gray color and it's kind of a two-tone grayish color in this room, which I like. It kind of goes nice and that way the colors pop against the light gray for my game room. But lately I've been um, I've had a lot of new goals. I'm also working on my garage, which I'm not going to show any footage of yet because it's really in the beginning stages. I just had a new utility sink installed with all new plumbing in my garage. i got a good friend of mine coming over real soon that's going to help me insulate the whole garage, including the, 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 the ceiling and the attic. And then we're going to drywall all the walls. Some of the walls are drywall, but most of them aren't. So I want to get it all completely drywall textured. And I'm going to do these really cool 70s super graphics throughout the whole inside, kind of like indicative of an old 70s arcade. Really bright, colorful 70s style graphics. Put in some really cool lighting out there. And I'm probably going to put one of my analog TVs, probably my 27-inch Sony Trinitron out there with a Super NES and a Genesis. And then have some bar stools out there where we can sit and play games. And then in the corner, I'm allocating one space for a full-size arcade cabinet. Probably Galaxian or Galaga, if possible. Maybe even Pac-Man. It's going to be probably expensive, but that'll be the icing on the cake. So this is a kind of a big work in progress. It's going to take me months to get this thing done and a lot of money, but I'm going to do the best I can. Be an extension of the game room. And I'll have a lot of gaming art out there as well, which I'm excited about. But anyway, aside from that, I've been... Um, <clears throat> I finished uh, Myst 3 Exile on the original Xbox, which is my first game to finish of the new year, and I'm about 24 hours, this is a long game, 24 hours into Myst 4 Revelation, an incredibly gorgeous game, point-and-click adventure game, 
This is the nicest one I've seen. A lot more animations, a much more lively environment that feels more alive with butterflies and insects and birds and creatures and foliage and the sun moving around and creating shadows. Just gorgeous. A wonderful game. This game is tough. I'm not, I don't want to go on the internet and spoil. So, I mean, I'll invest hours, three, four hours trying to figure out some of the puzzles. But it's so damn good and so immersive. I, I wish we had more of these. I think there's another two Miss games that are on the PC only that came after. This is the last Miss game that I know of that's on a, a console. But I love this series and would highly recommend Miss 4 Exile. But, uh, well, Miss 3 Exile is good too, but this Miss 4 Revelation is even better. If you like really tough, challenging puzzles. If you go on the internet and you, you spoil it for yourself, it becomes overly easy to kind of, you know, get through the game. So the whole idea is to kind of kill yourself getting through it. But after this, I also ordered two strategy guides that will be coming in the mail probably today or tomorrow. I got a brand new uh, Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition strategy guide, which I had before. I just started playing the game. My nephew came over and loved the game. After getting to the first city, he was like, oh, Uncle Dean, I love this. You know what? Here, take it. Enjoy it. Because he loves these kind of... He went through the whole game and did all five of the... Um, of the DLC expansion packs that are, is in this version, and I gave him the Game of the Year Edition Strategy Guide as well. So, I, I that's his. So I said I'll just order a new one for myself. This is a game that shamefully I haven't played, and I'm obsessed with playing it this year. My good friend Cameron from Industrial Gamer gave me for Christmas uh, Crisis Two and Three, which I have up here on my shelf, and then he gave me a money card to download the wonderful initial, first Crisis, which has been remastered for consoles, which you can get off Xbox Live Arcade. So I just downloaded that off Xbox Live Arcade. I'm dying to start the first Crisis. I don't know whether I'm going to do it first or Fallout 3, but it'll be coming up soon, right after I'm done with this uh, Miss 4 Revelations. And then I also have coming, hopefully today or tomorrow, a strategy guide for Cold Fear, one of my favorite games. Believe it or not, I like this better than the Resident Evil series. I know that's probably sacrilegious to say that. I like the early... Resident Evil 1 and 2, and I may be getting <clears throat> this Resident Evil HD remastered one downloaded off on the PS4, or I may even get a physical copy, like my friend Mikey did, of Mad Max 09's channel. And I'll have a link to his channel down below. Wonderful channel. He does, guys, he's been on a roll lately with some great gameplay videos. In fact, he's, today, I just saw it just minutes ago, he's got one of Alien, um, the Alien Trilogy. <clears throat> Uh, on the PlayStation 1, which I'm anxious to watch. It has wonderful gameplay videos and commentary. Check his channel out. I have a link down below. But Cold Fear, anyway, is just a wonderful, kind of a Resident Evil clone, but very unique. I'm dying to play that. So, And this game is tough. What the, the game doesn't have, to its discredit, is it's you can get lost on the, on the ship and then later on this uh, big oil drilling platform out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, so the, the the strategy guide has all the maps, so you can easily kind of navigate and see where you need to go because you can get lost easily. There's a lot of backtracking, kind of like the Resident Evil games in this. But anyway, that's what I've been doing lately, <clears throat> and I have some more strategy guides I'm going to be looking into getting, and a few more games as well. But uh, the gaming is going great. I'm really having a great time, putting a lot more time into it than I did last year. And last year was actually a pretty good gaming year as well. I still need to get back and finish Far Cry 4, which I've got, you know, 44 hours in that as well. But anyway, that's my recent update. Now I'm going to show you the game room, and I'll just kind of carry the camera and pan around the room and show you what I've done and talk about it. I know my camera is not the greatest. It doesn't have the compensation for the motion blur. I'm going to be getting a new camera and hopefully a new mic soon. I know a lot of people aren't crazy about my sound. I've had a lot of comments, oh, dude, you need to get yourself a mic because of the room echo and all that. Uh, the little camera I have is a built-in mic, but it's not the greatest, but it works, and thank God it does. So I kind of make do with what I have until I can upgrade and get new things. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to quickly segue this right in to my little game room tour. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching these pickups. And thanks again, Clint. This is a wonderful uh, you know, array of games here, which I'm dying to get into.
to turn the volume down there, but this is my uh, Sony 27-inch Sony Trinitron with built-in surround. It looks, it's a progressive scan TV. It looks great. And with this Genesis hooked up, I finally got to hook up this new stereo modded Genesis. And man, with this built-in surround this Sony TV has, it looks and plays incredible. I was playing this this morning, my Robocop um, versus Terminator. It's fantastic. This is my bigger 32-inch Toshiba TV, which also has a gorgeous picture. But I like the surround sound in the Sony a little bit better. I may be putting the Sony out in the garage. But anyway, that's my latest... Um, my latest deal. I'm really happy with this TV. I also have a VCR, RCA VCR that's hooked up underneath for watching my old mystery science videotapes or anything else, which is pretty cool. So I'm excited to finally be able to play Super NES games in Sega Genesis games. I kind of wanted to hook a Super NES up to this, but I just realized I don't have any games for it yet. So anyway, what I'm going to do is show you what I've been doing with the game room. Um, I have a little beach chair. I don't have it in here now, but I have it under the bed. But I can sit low to the ground, and I sit in here and play evenings. And it's so much fun. I just love playing, you know, these games. Like this old, you know, RoboCop versus Terminator is so cool. And that my good friend Mikey uh, surprised me and got me this game uh, when he got me the other Genesis, which I have, which is over here. So this is the other Genesis, which I have on my bookshelf. I'll start up high. You've got, um, I have a Far Cry 4, you know, special collector's box. A beautiful box. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it, but for the time being, it's up there. Pictures of my cats. I've got, <clears throat> I've got a few games. My rare Twilight Zone, uh, you know, DVD set, complete set I have up there. i got all my PS1 games here, which are awesome. A couple die-cast cars I have up here as well. And then I've got a bunch of Xbox games that are sandwiched um, on either side of my Max Payne 3 little statue. So, you know, I, I try to keep all my games in here. I got up some, you know, I got all four seasons of Starsky and Hutch up here as well. More wonderful Xbox goodness in here. And then I have all of my, you know, Xbox 360 games uh, on this shelf going behind my Genesis and then my Miami Vice Ferraris, which I have there. In there, including the Ferrari Daytona Spider convertible, um, my good friend Steve in um, Canada sent me. There's the Alien Colonial Marines statue, and then uh, behind that are more Xbox 360 games all the way across. Here's my collector's um, little uh, statue thing bobblehead deal of uh, from the Twilight Zone. It was in my favorite Twilight Zone episode with William Shatner. There's a '69 Dodge Charger. It has a really cool Hemi under the hood, which is pretty cool. The hood, trunks, the doors open. Everything works on it. Here's another one of my working three uh, mint condition original Xboxes. And my wonderful fat new PS2, which I absolutely love. I just love the looks of this thing. And then I have a couple pictures in here from uh, my special edition um, that I bought of the Arkham Origins game. Uh, GTA 3 and another Arkham Origins thing. And I have all of my um, wonderful, uh, you know, Blu-ray collection, which I'm just now starting to put together my Blu-rays. I have most of them here. And and I have my, you know, from the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen. I got a little Steve McQueen guy and next to a 68 Mustang. And then I also have the Assassins, which you can see both of them in there, uh, in their 68 ch Charger, which is also in the wonderful chase scene from Bullet. So I have those. There's my UK Alien box set. Here's all my Genesis games I have so far, not, and you know, which I haven't added to these, the ones I just recently got. Uh, but this is what I have so far, which I'm really excited about. These are all my strategy guides on the bottom shelf down here, and I got a lot of them along with a few art books for gaming, including the Dark Horse, the art from The Last of Us at the end, and I've got some other you know, Assassin's Creed 4 and Arkham Origins strategy books, hardbound books, and some other good books. So, anyway, I've got all, of, you know, that's pretty much my shelving unit. I've showed this before in other video, but I've already maxed this out along with my little set. Now, on my set, you know, I finally painted the full controller shape behind it, 
in gray, which it, which was meant to have. That's how I designed this logo originally, and it's nice to finally get it done. I don't know why the hell I didn't do it a long time ago. And I have my chair and a little table in front of it, and then my shelves as much as well as I've got you know the, the, my new uh, Far Cry 4 collector's edition um, little statue with all of the weapons and AKs and rocket launchers and machine guns and the whole deal and the villain of course and uh, this is a special larger version of the Batmobile my friend Steve from Canada sent me very detailed from the 1966 Batman I'm hoping to get that Batman Blu-ray set pretty soon I love that I've got a bunch of PS3 games here and then some tall boxes for the PS1 behind that I've got um, the SOCOM Navy SEALs headset they went for the PlayStation 2 game there's my original roadkill box from pre-ordering the game a million years ago <laughs> in October of 2003 I ordered that I love that game and my uh, autograph Robert De Niro picture from when I worked in the studios. There's, um, you know, my uh, this was a Christmas gift from my wife a few years ago. I think it was 2012. I got these uh, wonderful Miami Vice dolls, which I love. This Tubbs with this wonderful Mac 10, and then Crockett with the Beretta, and a pack of Lucky Strikes like he used to smoke in the thing. Here's some more, you know, um, PlayStation One goodness here. Great games, and then at the bottom I've got all the Grand Theft Auto Vice City CD soundtracks. All the stations. There's more PlayStation 3 games. My autographed uh, Mark Bustler from Classic Game Room sent me this wonderful Atari 2600 cartridge, which reminds me i got to get an Atari 2600, either a Vader one or a wood grain. I don't care. And then I've got some of my PlayStation 2 games here. Uh, I'm going to be getting more of those. I, don't, I have a smaller collection right now, but I'm going to be expanding that soon. And then my wonderful Star Trek uh, DVD box set. I love these. And they have HD DVDs on the flip side. And of course, the wonderful Gremlin from the movie Gremlins. Down here, I've got uh, you know all my 15 or so uh, PlayStation 4 games, which I love. Uh, all of them can be played offline and single player. And they play and look wonderful on the PlayStation 4. Here's my PS1 with Arnie and the Duke himself. Uh, in front of it, and then more wonderful original Xbox games. There's a special definitive Sleeping Dogs deal, and uh, the Duke himself and the Balls of Steel edition. But if you pan up a little farther back, <clears throat> you can see that that's what usually what shows on my set, but I have quite a bit of room above it. So I went ahead and I have this really cool um, Star Wars picture I found. It has these little LED backlights where some of the laser blasts are, and on the Death Star itself, I love this, and was really thrilled to find this recently. It's actually like a canvas deal, and it has like a little switch. You can turn it on and off. And then my good buddy, who's a wonderful, he was an actual airborne ranger in the U.S. military, and he's well as a fantastic artist and a car guy like myself. He's a car automotive artist. And he did this wonderful uh, print. In fact, I have a couple prints. I have another one in color, which I'm going to be framing and putting it out in the garage. But uh, he's an Airborne Ranger and did this really cool Airborne Ranger caricature, which I absolutely love. As a big FPS fan, and you know, he's into gaming as well. He has an Xbox One and a PS4. I was really happy to get this from him and put this on my wall. So I'm finally getting the, the room all set up. And then over here, past the stripe... Uh, here's my Call of Duty Ghost little uh, set of dog tag deal, which I hang off my light. I have these lights up here for lighting up my set, which I have off now because it creates some reflections on some of the glass. And then here's my original uh, James Doohan autographed Star Trek picture, which I absolutely love from the 60s. This is one of my prized possessions. I love this. And then I have an Alfred Hitchcock uh, rear window poster here fantastic film which I just recently bought on Blu-ray need to watch it. There's my uh, 60's Budweiser sign on tap and a couple you know my classic little you know die cast Danbury Men cars. Yoda of course which you can ask uh, disturbing yes and no questions and he answers with frightening accuracy. It's scary how realistic <laughs> it is. Um, and then over here you can see my Duke Nukem Forever window sticker which I put on my window. That's the only sticker I have on the game room. 
uh, and I also found, and I have right above my sign, the original Star Wars movie poster that's slightly downsized and laminated to a nice piece of thick wood. And it has a nice lamination on it. So I, I'm thrilled to find this. And so now I have not one, but I've got two wonderful Star Trek, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Star Wars pictures from the original film. And still my favorite is the very first one, which I saw the opening week in 1977. So, and then I've showed this before. This is, you know, my, my wood table, which I built and put several coats of clear coat on it. And then I have my TVs underneath that to kind of utilize the space. And then up here I have um, <clears throat> some lights. I'll keep like my whatever strategy guides I'm presently working on. I'll read those in here. And of course here's Vinnie Corleone, which as many of you know is um, the mascot of uh, Escape the Gaming. He's the one that I named my YouTube channel after. Vinnie Corleone himself. Hi bud. How you doing? <laughs> he's so good. And he's got his little cat condo in here. He loves it in here. I got this Budweiser sign uh, from the. I met George Barris in the late '80s. He gave me this uh, picture that was an actual movie production picture from the, the film *The Car* from 1976 or '77 around there. And I've had that for years and have it framed up there. Now I I needed more shelf space, so I built these floating shelves up here, and I put like I had my *Lord of the Rings* special edition uh, box set DVDs up here. I've got my Miami Vice. Uh, DVDs. I've got a 1950 Westinghouse radio, which actually works from 1950 up here, from the good old Leave It to Beaver days. And then I have the more uh, of my Blu-rays that I didn't have room for. So these shelves are great for overflow. They're up high, up by the ceiling, above my window. And then on opposite the other side of the orange stripe, I have more. I've got more of my original Xbox games, which I have up here. I have it in a few overflow of my um, Xbox. 360 games, and I also keep my uh, Super NES up here because it, that way it's away from the sun. The sun can't, you know, yellow it uh, as it's up high up here, and then I have my Sniper Elite box. So it's kind of nice having these shelves now because now you can pan back and you can see that I've got it's a good space. It's a very small room. I mean, it's probably, you know, 12 feet by 14 feet or so. It's very small. There's not a lot of room, so I've really thought long and hard about how to make good use of the room in the space. It's very small. And again, I have my closet there, uh, glass doors, and I've got all my, you know, my TV show DVD collection box sets are all up, up there. And then down in boxes down below, I've got, you know, thousands of DVDs and boxes categorized. So that's pretty much it. That's what's going on with the game room. <clears throat> um, it, it, you know, I've got to get the, the Super NES, I've got to get some games, and I'm going to hook the Super, Super NES up to the other TV, and then I'll have two, uh, you know, TVs to play. Again, one of these eventually will be going out in the garage with a couple of retro consoles. And then I also have, this is my art wall over here. I have temporarily have a boom box. I've got like a whole bunch of CDs down below. A bunch of kind of overflow of a bunch of all my Black Sabbath CDs are down here and my PlayStation 2 box, and I've got all of my Game Informer magazines on this card here, and then I've got a boom box up here for cranking tunes when I'm in here. So this wall here is, I have another light bar up here, and this is where I'm going to be doing my future gaming art. Here's my first piece is going to be the wonderful Twisted Metal, one of my favorite franchises. And uh, this is, I have it all designed and drawn, that's the, the basically the composition of it. And I just need to get uh, blow up, you know, this thing with a, a opaque projector, and I'm going to do it huge on a big piece of plywood, probably five feet in length, and do this, and then you know render the whole thing, cut it all out, just like my car art. So this is where I'm going to be doing setting up my easel here for doing my you know big four and five foot paintings or even smaller paintings uh, as well. So I'm really excited. Um, and then behind this door, I've got. Um, let me open this up. I have. I ordered this from Australia. I spent over a hundred bucks for this. It's kind of expensive, but I. This is an original movie poster uh, for the movie The Car in Australia, which was uh, basically it's the same car that I got from George Barris. <clears throat> 
So, it, you know, it's all coming together. It's nice to finally, there's really no, not much room for anything else. I've, I've got everything in here that I need. Uh, I might build a shelf across the whole top of this wall where I do my paintings. The length of that wall for an overflow of like Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm really happy with the game room. It's nice to see that it's all come together. It's great to finally have a little man cave to kind of crawl into. Uh, and get away from everything. Now, I play a lot of my modern games out there, but th this room was designed for retro gaming and for doing my YouTube shows. And for me, that's what it's all about. So, <clears throat> um, And by the way, the sound on this new stereo modded Genesis with the surround is fantastic. I can't thank you enough, Cliff. You did a wonderful job with this. It sounds great, plays great. It looks wonderful on this Sony Trinitron. I'm really pumped about this. So anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoy my little game room tour. It's been a lot of work. It's taken me, you know, about probably 14 months to get this, or, or longer, maybe 16 months, to get this whole game room all together. Uh, but it's finally coming into fruition. It's really exciting to finally to see everything happening and getting done. And now I'm going to be focusing on the garage and setting up my arcade deal out there real soon, like I mentioned earlier. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, the, show guys I've been so inspired from picture you know videos of your game rooms and your pickup videos and I just like to kind of pass on the savings to you with, with what I'm working on as an artist and as a visual person I like everything neat and clean and organized uh, otherwise my, with my ADD I'm all over the map so as long as I get everything organized and structured I can game and function <laughs> without guilt which is awesome so thanks again for watching uh, enjoy your games whether the retro games or new games, and have a wonderful 2015. I hope all of your goals uh, for your collections and your game rooms as well turn out wonderful. Thanks again for watching, and enjoy your games. <laughs>